I brought this point up many times, and I think you can articulate it in a way that most will understand it because a lot of people think I just be talking when I say certain stuff. There was a lot of criticism of our secondary last year, the year before. A lot of criticism. But I always tell people that you can't criticize that secondary because it starts up front. If you're not getting pressure up front, I don't care if you got Deion Sanders himself back there. Nobody can cover all day. I was taught by the, the great brother Oliver. He said the first pump from that quarterback is on the DB. After that, it's on the D-line. The first fake pump or whatever that quarterback does, it's on that DB to really react within that time frame. After that, you expect your D-line to have applied enough pressure to force him to either throw it away or sack him. Exactly. And that's what we have not been doing. I was so happy when I saw Steele get the job. You talked about the defensive line, which kind of leads into one of my first questions. Talk about how important it was for you to have those guys up front. You had some dudes, Chris Hood, Shannon Brown, Cornelius Griffin later on. Then you had a dude in the middle, Dwayne Rudd. Talk about mm. how instrumental they were for, for you guys, you, Deshae, and KJ to find success. And then if you could, part two to that, how important is this D-line to the success of Terry on Arnold and Kool-Aid. We had an unbelievable defensive front. And anytime I, it's hard to say, anytime you see a great secondary, because that that secondary back then was great statistically. You know, when we went in, even though we lost to Florida, we went in to see Florida, we was the number one secondary in the country. And mm -hmm. a lot of that had to do with that front, that front four and the pressure they put because it, it works hand in hand. When you go to practice and you tell that front four, hey, if if you just give me, hey, if, if you give me three seconds, so you give me four seconds, I know, I know you don't have to worry about anything. They can let their, hey, they can let their ears loose, they can pin their heads, I mean ears back, and they can go get it. And that's what that's what you want. When you have to worry about scheme and you have to worry about can this guy behind you um hold up for those first three to four seconds, you have problems. Mm. That front that we had, well, you had, you know, like you said, you had Rudd, who was all American. You had Hood, who was all SEC. You had Blackburn. You had all of, you had, I mean, like you said, you had all of those guys um, that came in. I, I mean, even Mike Myers. I forgot we had Mike Myers. Oh, yeah. Um, all American Mike Myers. Wow. Um, you think about all those guys and the pressure that we had up front. We knew if we held up for those first three to four seconds and we could learn, we knew that. They had to let the ball go so we could jump balls. You know what I mean? Wow. We could jump. We could jump those those passes, those short passes, and everything to where we could do what we wanted to. And if you really look what this D line has, you got to have that one guy. And obviously, we have that with you know what I mean with Turner. You have that one guy that you know you can depend <laughs> on that they're going to have to double team. And so mm -hmm. if you know that you know they're going to be sliding their line. You know they're going to be chipping with that back. So that other side of the line. I mean, you should be like foaming at the mouth, you know, knowing right. that you're going to get that one on one. And as a defensive player, all you want is a one on one. If you can put me one on one, I say I can win. I heard Kevin Steele say that really piqued my interest. When they asked him about the Bama standard, he said the Bama standard never left. So that means to me, it wasn't the players, it was a D coordinator. Yeah. So and one of the things that, you know, I want to see happen that I hadn't seen happen in the past few years with Bama is like Fernando was saying, when you got those dominant guys up front and they can actually do what we call being people eaters. It also if, if you if they do their job well, in a lot of instances, it'll force teams to leave that tight end in to block. That's one less person you got to worry about covering. It changes the complete dynamics of, of what you're doing defensively if they have to keep that tight end to block because your, dom your, your D line is that dominant. So it's a lot easier to cover three or four than it is to cover four or five.